Hey folks, Atropos here with another Foundry Virtual Tabletop development video update. Sorry it's been a while since the last one, but I've been hard at work on the core VTT. It's a good time to check in though, so I'm going to show off one of the features that was added in the recent Alpha 0.1.4 update, Ambient Audio Sources, and how you can use this tool to enrich your game sessions in Foundry VTT to create a more immersive experience for you and your players. The waterfall sound in the video is generated by an ambient source that was placed on this colorful jungle map by the large waterfall on the left. The waterfall gets louder as the player token approaches and quieter at further distances. Let's take a look at the Game Master's view to see how that came together. Audio sources are one of the GM tools available in the left-hand toolbar. Placing an audio source is really simple, left-click and drag. The initial click sets the starting location of the sound's origin. The further you drag your mouse, the larger the radius of the effect. Once you first release your mouse, a small configuration window will pop up, allowing for you to customize the effect further. I'll cover the details of this configuration later in the video, but first let's check on the result. Once an audio source is placed, it's immediately ready to use, so you can even add new sources mid-session if you need to. When the GM has a token selected, he or she will hear from its perspective any audio sources that are in the area. Let's go through another example, this time in the grove level of my Sunless Citadel map. This cave to the north has a large campfire which is a good candidate for an ambient sound effect. Sound effects work just like light sources, they are bounded by the walls which you've placed in the scene. When you place a sound or light source, its radius of effect will expand to fill the area that it can reach. When configuring the audio source, I first select my audio source file. Any audio format compatible with standard web audio playback is supported. You can also fine tune the pixel position and unit radius of the effect. I'm going to give the campfire sound a fairly large radius so that it will spill out a bit into the entrance room. The volume slider sets the volume of the audio effect at its epicenter. The volume easing checkbox, which I will select in this example, causes the sound to increase in volume as a token approaches the origin, while being quieter at the outer edges of the region. Let's check out the resulting effect from the player's perspective when the player token enters the room. This tavern scene provides another nice example of how to use this tool. I've already placed walls and some light sources here, but suppose I want the common room of my tavern to resonate with the bustling sounds of patrons enjoying the evening's festivities. I can place a large sound effect which blankets the entire common room. In this case, I may leave the volume easing option turned off so that the sound of merriment affects the entire room evenly. Keep an eye out from the player's perspective, which I'll show in a moment, and note that the audio coming from within the tavern is at first blocked by the closed front door, but as soon as the front door is opened, the sound from inside spills out to greet the player. Pretty cool, right? In this last example, I want to combine a couple of the tools covered in previous videos to set up a scene from scratch as a more complete example. I'm using the super cool Hell Skull map from Blue Sword Games on Patreon. Feel free to set up your scene in any order that works for you as the GM, but I like to start with the walls layer. There aren't really any vision blocking walls on this scene, but I'm going to use some invisible walls to keep players from jumping off into the lava unless I first get the chance to ask, are you sure you want to do that? 
Remember, invisible walls don't block token vision or the spread of ambient light or audio sources, but they will prevent movement. Next, I'll add some enemy creatures to the map to get a sense for what the encounter in this area might look like. I'll keep it simple with some skeleton warriors and their undead lord. To add tokens to the scene, I'm just grabbing the prepared actor entry from the sidebar and dropping them onto the scene. Next up, I want to think about light sources and illumination. I'm imagining this scene in some deep underground cavern, so instead of having global illumination, I want to set up a couple light sources which allow the lava flows to generate visible areas on the map. I'm just going to use two light sources, one for the main cavern of lava and another for the glow coming from the skull itself. For each light source, I can configure separately the radius of dim and the radius of bright light. I'll make this lava mostly bright light with just a touch of dim at the edges. To complete the ambience of this scene, let's add the sound of molten lava placed as an ambient audio source right in the middle of the bridge. This bubbling and churning sound will help to build tension for players without me as the GM needing to fuss with finding the right sound file during the middle of our session. As always, a main objective of FVTT is to allow you to do more with your prep time so that you can focus on the game during your session. Lastly, I'm going to place a player token and limit their vision to reflect the underground environment, shifting focus to the light generated by the molten lava. A couple final tweaks to the setup after previewing the scene appearance from the token's perspective and we're ready to test out a scene that looks, sounds, and feels epic. Thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to check out foundryvtt.com, patreon.com slash foundryvtt, and foundrynet on Twitter for more Foundry Virtual Tabletop updates. Cheers.